I think everybody sees Southeast Asia as a really viable, sensible uh, growth opportunity and investment opportunity. So for for me as a fellow Southeast Asian, where I like I call you know Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, home, um, this is is super 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 exciting because it's kind of proving why we started this journey to, you know nine years ago. At the same time, beyond you know the metaverse that we're talking about, we're talking about as a Southeast Asian, the opportunities that really are in front of us right now. It's it's real. We're getting to make real impact. We're getting to help change, you know, 600 million lives in the region. And particularly during the COVID times when everybody's struggling to make a living, especially if you're a small, medium enterprise business owner, or even if you're a normal person just trying to get food or deliveries to you because we're all in different versions of lockdowns right now, right? Um, I just can't, I couldn't have imagined nine years ago that we were going to be in a position to enable everybody to continue living some version of life, right? And that is very empowering. It's also uh, very scary sometimes, but I guess that's why every single day at Grab is, is uh, interesting and that's why we do what we do. It's definitely always been part of our journey, but I'll start with the fact that we've never done diversity for the sake of diversity. Um, to be honest, Anthony and I, when we first started a company, clearly as two co-founders, we were already, you know, very abnormal, one female, one male, right? But even more importantly, if, as we continued, you know, attracting fellow grabbers who had the same passion and, and vision as we did, um, we realized that we were accumulating a very di diverse group, not because we were intentionally doing so, but because it reflected the underlying culture that we believe in, which is if we're here to serve a very diverse group of Southeast Asians, the communities that we serve, super diverse. The large majority of our customers are female, right? If they are diverse, we need to be diverse to reflect their needs so that we can meet them where they are, right? And I think it also goes back to a lot of the foundations and beliefs of why we started a company. It's always been, you know, for double bottom line reasons. Uh, and it's always because we've believed in, you know, longer term general generational impact. And because of that, every time we think about what we're doing, we're not thinking about it just for, hey, today, tomorrow, we're thinking about next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And as we all know, DNI, diversity, it's really important in terms of the long-term arc of how we as, as communities are evolving uh, and, and getting better at um, as, as humans together, right? So just a bit of that starting context. Now, since then, We've actually started to formalize some of our DNI and diversity initiatives, right? It's crystallized over time. Um, and it again comes out in written format in, in the vision and the mission that we've now actually put into paper. Before this, it was in our hearts. We talked about it. Now it's actually in a document that you know we share with all our, our grabbers. Uh, we call it the grab way. Uh, and it talks a lot about things like uh, creating safe and inclusive workplaces and about how you agree to disagree respectfully. Right. Um, and what we do now as well, now that it's actually become more of a science and, and something that people, you know, are putting metrics and measurements behind, we actually monitor our wage parity on a quarterly basis as well to ensure that there are no conscious or unconscious biases on how we're, we're compensating our, our grabbers um, globally. And then on top of that, on a monthly basis, we also look at additional um, metrics like, hey, how many women do we have in the, in the company? More than 40% of grabbers are women. Um, what's the ratio of women in leadership roles? And also how many nationalities do we have in a company? So we're at about 60 right now. <laughs> we, um, we actually hit the 40 or 50 uh, nationalities in grab very early on in, in our grab journey. Um, because again, it was just a reflection of who we are, what we stand for, and it wasn't that we didn't do it for the sake of doing it. Net net, I think, Ultimately, we, we strongly believe in it and we think it's, it's something that needs to be more than just numbers because ultimately, if you have a great diverse group of individuals, but if they don't feel that they are heard, it doesn't matter. Their thoughts won't then translate into diverse ideas and hopefully this lead to innovative, diverse 
uh, solutions for, for our customers. Oh, for sure. It comes out in all of our problem-solving sessions. Um, sometimes you get really creative, random, great ideas. Um, and I think if you look at our, our product, our super app, right, the fact that it is what it is is because we've had many, many amazing grabbers contributing ideas and working on them and acting on it and, and rolling them out. Um, and so what we try and do is also to, now that we are aware of it, right, we don't try and take it for granted. And we also know that we have a role to play in hopefully setting examples for others as well. So internally within Grab, especially now that we're like 7,000 large, um, we also are investing into programs to encourage this more actively throughout the entire organization, not just for folks who are close uh, you know, to, to myself or Anthony, but everybody throughout the organization can hopefully feel empowered to drive change and learn on their, um, in, in their respective ways as well. What do I mean by this? Um, for example, some of the programs that we've put into place are like things like Women at Grab, where you know junior female grabbers can reach out to senior female grabbers to learn from their experiences. We also have other employee resource groups like Pride at Grab, um, and we also intentionally put in platforms like whistleblowing platforms just in case when things don't go well, folks feel that they can be heard in a safe way. So holistically speaking, um, we definitely value it and we see it coming out every single day as part of our conversations and and how we trigger each other to think creatively and that's something that we want to continue to, to champion and celebrate and um, yeah I just hope we can continue doing so. Well, I was a fresh graduate that was plopped straight into McKinsey. So definitely mentorship and sponsorship was a huge part of my personal and professional uh, journey. And I'm extremely grateful and thankful for the many, many amazing, you know, people leaders, managers, partners, client leaders who have always taken additional minutes out of their days to just spend time with me. And, and I can remember so many of these conversations in my head right now. And I, I just really am still thoroughly uh, grateful for them. I keep in touch with some of these folks, right? Uh, and right now I'm trying to pay it forward as well. Uh, but I would say that I'm, I'm lucky to be where I am today because I have in many ways been molded and shaped by many of these folks. Some of the brightest, smartest people with some of the kindest hearts. And I feel as if I've had the fortune of not just learning from one individual, but many different individuals, which is, you know, something none of us should take for granted. So at Grab, like I mentioned some of the mentorship programs that we, we do right now, we're intentionally trying to create that environment. Again, we don't have it perfect. We're learning a lot across the way as well. We know what we want to achieve and we're constantly going to, to uh, get better and get feedback and just go on that Kaizen continuous improvement journey. Uh, but we're quite excited about the, the momentum and the trajectory that we're on. And hopefully if we can just continue doing this, um, no problem will be unsolvable for us. Okay, first, the first part of the advice will probably go to any aspiring entrepreneur or any, anybody who's thinking about, hey, what should I do with life, right? Trust me, folks, I, I spent the majority of my life struggling with that question, uh, which is, what is life all about? What should we do, be doing and why and all of that, right? Um, if there is, from my experience, if there's one thing I can share is that don't stress too much about, you know, what's the perfect path in life because there is actually really no right or wrong answer because success ultimately is defined by what it means for you and it means different things for different people. So embrace the fact that life is not planned you know folks have used the jungle gym term i'm just like take the journey take you know whatever path that excites you at that point in time just make the decisions based on the information that you have and know that you've made the best ones never look back and regret because when you do that that's when no matter what you're doing entrepreneur or not you know, whether you're at City or McKinsey or whatever, whatever you're doing, it really doesn't matter, right? But be ready for a non-stop roller coaster journey, right? Um, what you read in the news versus what you experience day to day, it's 
super different. It's just like what you see on Facebook and Instagram and what you know, you know real life is. You know one does not accurately reflect the other. And just go in knowing that and if you're comfortable with that, comfortable with the risk, comfortable with the fact that it's going to be super challenging but also super re rewarding when you're continuously learning, learning right? Um, and doing something that you care about, then, then go do it. The other thing I would recommend uh, the entrepreneurs out there uh, to get used to is actually get excited about the joy of missing out. What, what we call internally at Grab, JOMO, right? A lot of people talk about fear of missing out, FOMO. JOMO is a complete opposite, which is I actually love it when people are having meetings and conversations that I don't know about, I don't need to know about, and they're handling. Because if not, it's impossible to be on top of everything. Now extend that to your personal life or extend that to whatever startup idea you're on. It is impossible to always be the first, always be ahead of whatever technology innovation curve is out there, or always be ahead of your customers' needs and wants because there's so many of them and they're super diverse. And the point is not to be everywhere at once. The point is to be focused and be clear about what you're doing and have a, a strategic underpinning behind that, right? So. Stepping back, um, it's, it's a big one, but I love it when, when I'm missing out on things. So JOMO rather than FOMO, uh, and hopefully that will help you stay sane in this really crazy world where there's too much going on for us to keep on top of. Mm -hmm.